loss of reflection of light. The first point is the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Look at the picture here. AB is the mirror. PS represents a ray of light incident onto the mirror. The light is incident at the point S or S is the point of incidence and the reflected ray of light according to the law of reflection of light gets reflected back at an angle R which is equal to I. So that is the angle of incidence in this case it is I is equal to the angle of reflection R. Now the second point is the incident ray the normal to the mirror at the point of incidence and the reflected ray all lie in the same plane. So these two points put together makes the law of reflection of light. Spherical mirrors. Now let's discuss about spherical mirrors. The reflecting surface of a spherical mirror may be curved inwards or outwards. A spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is curved inwards that is faces towards the center of the sphere is called a concave mirror. A spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is curved outwards is called a convex mirror. Let's discuss some terms related to spherical mirrors. Fold. The center of the reflecting surface of a spherical mirror is a point called the pole. It lies on the surface of the mirror. The pole is usually represented by the letter P. In this picture, MN represents a concave mirror. It's a spherical mirror and the center point represented by the letter P represents pole of the spherical mirror. Center of curvature. The reflecting surface of a spherical mirror forms a part of a sphere. This sphere has center. As in picture you can see this point is called the center of curvature of the spherical mirror. It is represented by the letter C. Note that the center of curvature is not a part of the mirror. It lies outside its reflecting surface. The center of curvature of a concave mirror lies in front of it. However, it lies behind the mirror in case of a convex mirror. The picture here shows a concave mirror. As you can see, the center of curvature of this concave mirror lies in front of the mirror. Radius of curvature. The radius of the sphere of which the reflecting surface of a spherical mirror forms a part is called the radius of curvature of the mirror. It is represented by the letter R. So radius of curvature is nothing but the radius of the sphere of which the reflecting surface of the spherical mirror forms a part. It is represented by the letter R. In figure, the distance PC is equal to the radius of curvature. Principal axis. Imagine a straight line passing through the pole and the center of curvature of a spherical mirror. This line is called the principal axis. Remember, the principal axis is normal to the mirror at its pole. Aperture. The reflecting surface of a spherical mirror is by and large spherical. The surface then has a circular outline. The diameter of the reflecting surface of spherical mirror is called its aperture. In figure, distance mn represents the aperture. For spherical mirrors of small apertures, the radius of curvature is found to be equal to twice the focal length. We put this as R is equal to 2F. This implies the principal focus of a spherical mirror 
lies midway between the pole and center of curvature. 